<laughs> Actually filming. How's it going? Good, mate. Okay, ready to hit the shit out of some balls? Yes. Okay. I'll just perfect. grab my belt. Yeah, okay, grab your belt. Got your clubs in the back. Okay. He's got no idea what he's getting himself into. Anyway, don't tell him. But what I'm going to do when we get to the driving range is uh, I'm going to put him in a nice light trance. And uh, I'm going to get him hitting balls better than he's ever hit them before. And he's not going to be exactly sure why. So, you'll really enjoy this. It's going to be really good. <laughs> he has no idea what's going on. It's great. Alright, let's take it, eh? How are you? This one actually got on the thing with one. Oh, I'll just chop her up for whatever's relevant. I'll be good. Oh, that's a nice ride. Porsche. Oh, no, a Porsche. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm one of them. Yeah, this was Dad recording the swing the other day. Oh, yeah. You got a good swing. No, that was, it, it got... Even Dad goes, listen to, listen to Dad. Listen. Pretty good swing. <laughs> Like hard boss to please. Is he? He's like, yeah, that was a pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. It's just, it's like, it's just okay. Yeah. 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 But um. Is he, what's your dad like? Is he a good golfer? Uh, not, not really. I mean, he dad's uh, 65. Okay. Well, I mean, 65. Yeah, yeah. So. But can he still? Yeah, he can still hit a lot. Right. Physically, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's um, dad's uh, five foot three. What? Yeah. That told your mum seven foot eight or something. Uh, <laughs> no, but that's the thing. Like, I'm a kind of. Like I'm lucky, I've got a bit of height. Yeah, but you're solid as well. Yeah, like dad, as in, as in you're, just, you're thick. Dad's like real, dad's tiny. Oh, right, okay. Did your dad uh, play much sport back in the day? Uh, no, not really. Mum mum did. Mum is an uh, all round um, athlete. Like, she, it, she's run so many marathons. She was in the running crew with um, Stephen Wigetti, YCW, Catholic workers. Like, oh, right. she, used to, she used to run. Like run the lake every morning, like 20, yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, wow. Six k in twenty minutes, like. Yep. That's about six and a half k, I think. But twenty minutes is really quick around the uh, around the lake. Yeah. Lake like around. Yeah, that is. Steve might get his my what is he? He's my granddad's cousin. Oh really? Yeah, he's like my third cousin or something. I think that makes. Yeah. It. Although I can't run a kilometre. Oh, I I, look, I've never been the best of runners. Good. Like I've never found it interesting, to be honest. Like. I'd rather run in like a sport, like footy. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Like running on its own, bores the shit out of me, to be yeah. honest. Okay. It's a personal opinion, like I'm not saying running's bad, I'm saying it's not for me. That's fair enough. A lot of it depends on your uh, your lungs as well. Like when I was born, I was uh, in a humidity grip because my, I went purple because my lungs weren't developed because I was pregnant. So that has a lot to do with my roaming capacities. Uh, yep. Not very good because my lungs were damaged. Yep. And, uh, sort of lucky to breathe and live alone, but uh, yeah. honest, you know, Did you ever smoke? Smoke for a little while, because then uh, quizzes. Yeah. yeah. Smoke, smoking is uh, not good. Shocking, yeah. Oh, that's not, that's uh, not happy at the moment. The government's putting uh, taxes up on, on smokes, and so they can uh, come to me now and uh, I'll help them with the hypnosis. Yeah. So that'll get to the point where there's no smoking. Because there is literally not one smoker that says, I enjoy smoking and have no intention of quitting. Like, yeah, totally agree. There isn't, there, there, there literally isn't. Like, uh, there is not one smoker that says, I am happy with... And, in, and actually enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. It's because they're all hooked yeah, on nicotine. Here's the thing about smoking. Like, it, um, it would cost... If you're buying a pack of guns, that is... That is a hundred and forty bucks a week. Yeah. To kill yourself. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, I've got no idea. Yeah, I'm trying to get my head around it as well. It's like, I think when, you know, what, 20 years ago, it was probably, you know, two, three, four dollars a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. Um, it's uh, just the taxes nowadays. 
actually get a bit of a, like an anxiety attack when I smoke. That's fantastic. Do you know, like, it, honestly, like, when, when I'm smoking, you know, it's like, I, I feel like on edge. It's, it does the opposite for me. But that's, that's what it actually does. Did you know why people think they relax when they smoke cigarettes? Why? It's because they take deep breaths. They actually um, inhale more oxygen. That's what causes the relaxation. They drag on the cigarette and inhale more oxygen. Seriously, that's actually what it is. And they think they're smoking relaxes. Instead, they're just injecting, you know, they're inhaling arsenic. And the oxygen, you know, sort of makes them feel as though it's a good thing to inhale arsenic and rocket fuel and, you know. Yeah, it's insanity. Oh, uh, when you look at one of those, um, when you look at one of those charts, of like everything that's in a in a city. Oh, it makes you want to chuck. It just go. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> oh, all right. Hey, we're getting close to this golf course. Yeah. We are. <coughs> hey, Mr. Lollipop Man. What's going on here? Trucks falling oh, over. Oh, yeah. it hasn't has it? No. Nah, looks like it's roadworks or something. Uh, also, Minson in the ruck down okay. at the Torre stands in the tackle, looks at the umpire, and he just says, Get rid of it. Thanks for coming along, Bill. Yeah, no worries. No, I was uh, pretty eager to. The good thing about the range is it only takes, you know, an hour less. That's it. Heaps it's, less. it's not an all day thing. That's interesting. That'd be on good rates, actually. On a Sunday? Yeah. yeah. They're probably on 50 bucks an hour each. Yeah. No comment. <laughs> no comment. I have to put him in trance and uh, take him out and do that properly. Go on, yeah. pop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, how funny is that? Okay, so, yeah, so it's a pretty simple sort of thing. You know, I'll, I reckon your superfoods thing is... Uh, I reckon there's a validity in that. I think, I mean, you, you need to you need to change. You can't. I don't think you can approach the superfoods from just a selling perspective. Yeah. I think it needs to be part of something else. Yep. Like a whole. I don't know. If, if it's not like you can just kind of set up a store and just advertise it. Yeah, I think that's approaching it the wrong way. You need yep. to get people in the frame of mind where. It's not just kind of selling, oh, this is good for you, because that's been and done, like, and everybody does that. It's about somehow kind of delivering the point that... It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. This will make you feel consistently better every day, and people are willing to spend so much money on certain things like rent, but then they're not willing to spend money on things that will make them feel better, look better, and make them so much better in the long run. Oh, do you find that ironic? Uh, yeah, I do. However, it's um, the way that the way that we're conditioned is um, it's quite sad, actually. Just the fact that um, they make us, or make a lot of people believe that uh, you know that they're eating stuff that's better for them than what it actually is. And, mm. Not actually taught. Yeah. Do you ever uh, eat mackers? Very rarely. I have to be pretty hungover to eat mackers. I have to be, in fact, to be in the state of mind where I don't care to the point where I'm eating McDonald's. Yep. I need to eat, need to either be starving to death or very hungover <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to even stomach it. To be to be able to eat it. The old, uh... Actually, I'm quite glad we didn't play because um, the course is looking very... You know, the rain last night. Yeah. The course, it would be... It wouldn't be very pleasant, I don't think. There'd be a few holes that'd be pretty pretty soggy. Yep. Totally agree. It'd just be uh, wet and miserable. Yeah. But anyway, that's okay. We'll get her a bend and...
Yeah. So what do you what do you reckon, Bug Lugs? We all ready to hit uh, hit some balls? Yes, for sure. Feels they got rubber. I just dropped the phone. That's all right. So there's 175. It's um, like as I suppose as accurate as I want to be. It's more about just my swing plane. Yep. Um, just relaxing as, as opposed to um, you know thinking about where they end up okay the first thing to do is obviously kind of you know, yeah do you just want to do you want to just warm up and just hit 10 balls yeah. right I don't want you to sort of think of anything I just want you to just you know focus on your swing plane and just relax and just hit a couple and warm up a bit and we'll be sweet it's great it's raining we're at the range yeah it's beautiful Wait, let me see. It's not bad, Put your feet down there. It's not bad. How good's that? So what are you what are you hitting at uh, what are you hitting towards at the moment? Okay, so this is a warm up. So I'm actually I'm hitting for the 175. Yep. Okay. So because there's no greens, um, you can't really focus on um, you know hitting at a specific target. But yeah, I'll, I'll start going for the 175. Okay. No issue. to the 175. Yep. Yep, you're all good. You're like your feet will be in line with the 175. Yep. So. And how did you, like, you hit that rather straight, like, that was in the right direction? Yeah, it wasn't cool. the best shot. Um, yep. There's a few things I need to, to focus on. Yep, okay. So what we'll do now is, like, we'll just keep focusing on just you warming up, hitting yeah. some balls like how you normally hit them, yep. and we'll hit them towards your target, and then we'll, uh, then we'll do a bit of, uh, bit of trance work, and we'll uh, have a look at the difference in performance. Be awesome. Uh, I had a golf lesson maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, and uh, coach pointed out some things that they're improving, um, which yep. I know I need to improve on, but it's about kind of being in that state of mind where they're just, you, you, you naturally do it, yes, as opposed to have to folk like remember yourself. It needs to be autonomous, it needs yeah. to be un you need to be unconsciously confident yeah, exactly. so that you exactly. can execute. Absolutely. Otherwise, when you go to swing, you're going eventually through a 15 point checklist. By the time you get to the fourth checkpoint, you adjusted your first one. So you go back to, let's say your first checkpoint is square up your shoulders. Yep. Then your next checkpoint is grip or um, you know stance, whatever. Yep. By the time you fix that up, your shoulders are back to the incorrect spot. So it's about yep. kind of getting to that mind frame where you're um, automatic, autonomously going. Yep. Absolutely. Um, no, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. That's uh, that's exactly right. Got to do it. You got to do it. It takes about ten thousand hours as an expert to be unconsciously competent to execute without thinking, basically anything.
you, you hit that pretty good, and that was a nice sort of nice little draw as well. Nice shape on the ball. Yeah, that was uh, that was I mean, that was really that was good. Yeah. That was uh, that was yeah a better shot. So it was a bit out to the right, but in terms of where it started and kind of my position, that was that was better. Yeah. Yep. All right. Beautiful. So, how do you feel? Do you feel like you've warmed up a bit? Yeah, I feel pretty warmed up. Yeah, you feel all right? Okay, good, good. All right, so Miles, what do you reckon? Uh, are you happy to, uh, to sit down and we'll do a little bit of uh, little bit of trance work and then we'll start to hit some balls? What do you reckon? Give it a go. Is that all right? Go. All right, have a seat, champ. So, are you going to talk to me the whole time while the camera, you're holding the camera? No, I'm going to put... I'll put the camera down and we'll just... I'm, all I'm going to do is just... Induce a state where you yeah. feel so you sit on that side of the camera, I reckon, and then okay, sure, all right, no worries. Okay, all right, so what we're going to do is uh, all I'm going to do is just induce a, a little bit of trance just so that uh, I can really anchor the uh, the feelings of peak performance and uh, the euphoric feeling mm. of, uh, of performing it at your potential. Mm. Does that make sense? Can I have that golf club for a sec? Yeah. He passes the golf club, so I'm going to actually put the camera down. All right, and and we'll do a little bit of a little bit of work. Do you feel okay with that? Yeah, no, perfect. Okay, great. All right. I, pre I actually prefer the camera just to be down the whole time. You do? Yeah, I feel like I can focus on you more if you're not holding. Yeah, no, because I can't actually do my I can't actually do my job with holding the camera because it's a bit of a distraction. Right. No, it's a bit of a distraction. I can actually yeah, probably sort of go into a state of mm. Okay, so we're going there now. But anyway, so in order for you to, to go into the zone more often, I need you to be able to call upon these great feelings and how it feels to be in peak state where you put in the ball perfectly. Right? So as you sit there and relax and, and you feel the weight of your body in there. I just want you to free down, I just want you to relax, close your eyes. I just want you to just go down into a, a beautiful unconscious state and it's where you where you feel the earth. And the further you resist now, the further and the deeper and the deeper you feel. It's a state of unconscious bliss going to just one. So close your eyes. And just relax now. And just listen to the sound of my voice. Is nothing but a heightened state of awareness. Now, you've up in the train six to seven times a day when you're on television or you read the mail. Okay, Miles, I've just brought you out of trance. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, it almost makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. I'm going for that um, tree just over the 90. Yep, okay, beautiful. Uh, you've almost hit the tree in the middle. But the thing was the flight path was directly in line yeah. with the, the tree. You're hitting the ball crisp. It's a lot crisper. Always very hard to control the fine but about being like lower heart rate. It's um for the, for the big pressure moments, that's when it would come out because that's when you can literally nearly miss the thing, you know. Yeah, definitely. Hey, I've got a question. How do you feel with the golf club in your hand? 
Yeah, it's lighter. It's kind of warmer. But how do you feel? Oh, better. I feel a lot better. Do you it, feel good? Do you feel it, relaxed? It, it, that's, it's all about kind of always being in the same state of mind because that's when you can just play consistently. If you, if you get nervous, you get that tension, you can't, you can't honestly play. Because when you practice, you're kind of more relaxed, but then when you go into those high-pressure moments, that's when those players that can just keep their mind win. Yep, absolutely. Tits and balls. I know. It's just fucking. You just, it was unbelievable. Perfect shape on the ball as well. Okay, go. Hit balls. Just, just have fun. Hit balls. Like we spoke about. That tree would be, it's a 160 metre 7 on, which is very long. <laughs> See, the thing is, it's amazing how your body functions when it's loose and relaxed. And yeah. what, what we've done is we've anchored the feeling, the euphoric feeling of relaxation and positivity and euphoria to your golf club. And I'm, um, I'm doing a lot more things that normally I wouldn't do if I was kind of tense. So it's amazing that once you're kind of relaxed, everything else works in with with what you wanted to do because you don't have to think about this whole checklist, which is impossible to play well in. You've just hit five balls in a row down the same shape then the same, like within probably 10 foot of the same spot. And they're all perfect. They're all perfect shape. <laughs> that, that is, that's their tour shots like, they're the shots that... Keep going. You'll be able to hit 50 in a row the same. Yeah, good. Very. Yeah. <laughs> now you're looking like a robot. How far are you hitting it? That was the longest of them all, but the best thing is uh, my footwork's happening, I suppose, automatically. Like, I, I, I know to do it, but for it to actually happen is good. Yeah. It doesn't always happen, like, it sometimes have to remember everything, whereas sometimes it kind of just happens, like it's better when it just happens. Keep going. I can't explain it very well. well. What's happening now is, um, hit this ball and I'll talk to you. You're hitting every ball within a 10, 15 feet of each other. Yeah. Every ball. And you're hitting a seven iron. <laughs> Miles, you know what you know what we were just doing? What's that? 
when you enter peak performance state, right, your unconscious does what it already knows how to do, right? And so through going, through putting you in trance and anchoring and, uh, and bringing up these states, all I'm doing is asking your unconscious to do what it already knows how to do, without all the bullshit, without all the distraction. And so just get there and hit the ball where you want to hit it. Simple stuff. Keep, talk, keep talking like that, that voice, that is a relaxing voice. It's like a, I don't know, it's just relaxing. Right? It's because I'm a hypnotist, eh? <laughs> <laughs> It's getting a little scary now. That was perfect line. <laughs> and how do you feel when you hit the ball that good? Yeah, good. <laughs> so what do you reckon? You hit the balls and I'll be the caddy? See how the... This is the best thing. All of the divots are starting on the perfect plane, which is towards the power pole. So that's why the, um, that's why the draw is happening. Yep, because so, you're hitting the ball inside out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. so I'm coming in from the inside. The club face is a little closed, but as it's coming down, because it's coming in from the inside, it's putting that clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise spin. Yep. So that's why they're starting out a little to the right and then Working back. bending back. But it's very hard to get that draw with that height because a draw has a bit of top spin. Top spin makes it go lower. Back spin makes it go high, which is why slice scoops up. Okay. Bad scoop. So to get that height with the draws, um, you know, that's that doesn't happen too often. So. Oh, you're hitting every ball like that. <laughs> that was a beast. <laughs> oh, I know. That flew the. Uh, that, flew, that flew that crate. With a seven on. And how far is that crate away? Oh, it's hard to say. Maybe 145, 150 for the crate. So flying that with the seven on. These mats never go. Uh, these mats never go as far because. The, it's quite cushiony, so they don't have as much. They're kind of more lofty shots. All right, I'd like you to talk to me about how do you feel compared to how you felt before we done some trance work, before we done some hypnosis on the golf course. How do you feel different? I feel more relaxed, um, which is probably the one thing, not just in golf but in life, that I'd like to have more of. Yeah. Oh, we can do some work outside of sport on that. Yeah. Serious? No, no, that would be... Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'd probably, I'd probably actually... Probably doing more outside of sport would yeah. help me just as much as... In as sport. hitting balls. Like, yeah. Yep. Um, just optimism and... Yeah. Um, so look at look on your face. You know, I, I could see myself doing a lot of this. Yeah. Like, exactly. Like, so what you got to remember, right, is what we're effectively doing is we're, we're changing your self-image... Right, so if you believe you're something different than what your self-image is at the moment, you instantly become it. Right, so you can basically pick anything and I'll install anything. Like, yeah, like I want to be an executive, I want to be a CEO, I want to be, um, you know, the, the type of person that gets out and grows organic food and owns a farm, it can be anything. I'm never going to install anything that's not ethical, however, it makes you think about it a bit differently. Well, what could you do? What can't you do? Exactly. That's that's right. So, all right. Okay. So. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try one shot. I'm gonna try and kind of start it over the 135. Yeah. Okay. Bend it back into the tree. Oh, okay. So you want to fade the ball a bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The opposite way. Okay. Go for it. It's fading towards the tree. It's ridiculous. I have enough fade, but I tell you what, I just I just got chills when you done that. What a, a deliberate fade is 
quite hard. I'd actually find it harder to hit a deliberate phase than a deliberate draw because okay. if you come out... Go again, do it again. What you have to remember is you're playing with offset clubs as well. You're not playing with blades. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. See, you're playing with offset clubs. You're not playing with uh, with forged blades. So it's hard to work the ball. Yeah. You're working the ball with uh, offset clubs. But I haven't, since we've done it, I haven't seen you hit one ball poorly. Well, no, I haven't. No. Um, and so how much of a difference do you think it would make to your game if you went out and played 18 holes and couldn't hit a bad ball? Well, that's when it would uh, be more... Uh, apparent because that's when you feel pressure so yep it, this this isn't about making me uh, like physically a better golfer yep. that's impossible it's about keeping you in the mind frame though so you can play with the practice so you don't hit bad balls yeah exactly so it's, it, it can't obviously make me better that that is practice on its own but in terms of the, the state of mind it's all about the state of mind that's why those golfers that can hold their mind on the course and yep. win because at the end of the day they're all basically level with skill they all, they all are I mean if you have somebody that starts when they're 10 or that and play flat stick you do reach that point where you can't get really better it's all about a, a pro on the range will hit the same shot a hundred times but on the course that's when it'll change because there's pressure that's his that's his income yep that's when he will let I've got I've got a, uh, a challenge for you. How would you feel if uh, if we started doing this once a week, the trance stuff, and we enter you in a tournament? Uh, I would, yeah. I, I would I'm, yeah, I'm going to be your caddy, All right? And we just have some fun and see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely do that. It'll take more, it'll take more practice, but yeah, yeah. Um, but is there something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sweet. Because golf, I, I haven't, I haven't played professionally. Oh, not not professionally, but tournament like for a long time, and I'm actually disappointed with myself because um, I suppose I got into you know frame of mind where it didn't interest me. Wrong things interested me. Yep. Um, whereas, you know, it's as though kind of this kind of thing makes you realise what's good and. Well, maybe I just installed something. <laughs> yeah, of um, miles, I've seen enough, man. You've hit, you've hit twenty-five balls in a row. Awesome.